Welcome back to NC State Dendrology. I am in Carteret Crowney on the Elliott Coos Trail. Again, the backside, I can actually, where I'm standing, I can see the marsh um, off on the backside of the island. And I'm here with this really cool tree that is kind of a, um, well, you know, so I'm in the maritime forest. And so the dominant species is live oak, which is Quercus virginiana. And the species I'm with now was, is one that you would walk past, and I have certainly walked past numerous times, just assuming that it's live oak. It's got these thick, leathery leaves. Um, but this is actually a different species. This is sand live oak, which is Quercus geminata. It's often mistaken for live oak. And um, it's a much smaller tree, and one that is sort of scattered. So in maritime forests, Quercus virginiana is the dominant species. And Quercus geminata, at first to me, I thought it looked like a live oak that's in like really terrible conditions. Like the leaves are much smaller, um, they're kind of curled up, and so it looks like drought stressed live oak to me. Um, and in fact, this species is more found on deep sands and very drought prone areas. Uh, there are differences in the acorns, but I haven't seen acorns for Quercus geminata, so I can't really comment on those myself. But if you're walking through and looking at this species, um, so the live oak leaves that we are in the maritime forests are thick and leathery. These are just as thick and leathery on Quercus gen geminata, sand live oak. Um, and so thick and leathery, a little bit fuzzy on the underside. And I think you can see um, that these leaves are really, they're revolute. So the edge of the leaf, the leaf margin is actually rolled under. Um, and so it's been actually described as being so rolled under that sometimes the leaves look like um, see if you think so. Whoops, the, the light is really weird here. But little canoes. Um, and so you can see on these, these leaves, they are definitely, you know, really strongly revolute. Also, um, another one that I, another characteristic that I had not paid attention to, but is mentioned in the State Parks um, Vascular Flora website, which I really recommend, a really great website, is that Quercus geminata has more prominent venation than live oak. And so those, those veins are really um, sunk in and much more common on the, or much more prominent on the undersides of these leaves. And so as I'm walking along, right, I'm seeing these very small leaves. So they're quite a lot smaller than live oak, but they're certainly overlap in range. So that makes it a little bit tricky. Um, and the leaves, I would describe them as being a little more narrow than live oak, generally speaking. Again, leaves vary quite a lot, and so, like here's a here's a sand live oak leaf, right? Still has got the prominent veins, which you can see even on the underside. Definitely revolute margin, but look, it's got these crazy little lobes on it, um, and it's quite a lot larger than some of the other leaves that I've got here. But when I think about um, Quercus geminata, think about these leaves that have. I'm trying to find a really nice example, right? And near, very narrow. Um, near, very narrowly elliptical leaf. It is broadest towards the middle, but um, is, is almost linear. Um, and then with this very strongly revolute margin, so kind of curled up, smallish leaves. Just think of them. Here's one that's like a classic um, little canoe. So you could definitely float this on the surface of the water. So that's sand live oak, Quercus geminata. Um, thought to occur Carteret County is thought to be the farthest north, but again, this is a species that's readily overlooked because of its similarity to live oak. So if you're in a place with very deep sands and you see a live oak that um, has a sort of drought, droughty look to it with reduced leaves um, that curl under, decent chance that you might have sand live oak or Quercus geminata. And that's a wrap.